Hey everybody, welcome back. So you may have heard on the news that there is a salmonella outbreak and it is tied to bearded dragons. And there's been a lot of discussion over the years about reptiles in relationship to salmonella infections. How big of a deal is it? Well, this one we're gonna talk about specifically today on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, Help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. So for those of you guys that keep up with us, you may recognize this place that I'm in. This is my Nile Monitor enclosure. Uh, we are gonna be talking about bearded dragons in relation to the latest news stories but I figured it might be cool instead of hanging out in the enclosure of a one foot long beardy, we can hang out with a six foot long Nile monitor who uses his bathtub as a toilet, which I have to have my hands in and clean regularly. Uh, so as this all relates to Salmonella, you guys will kind of see where this is going. Now, there's been a couple news stories here recently. Uh, the outbreak, as it's called, is last I heard was like 15 cases in nine states. So the CDC says these animals should not be purchased as pets for kids under five, saying today that these animals can carry the disease throughout their body and in their habitat. And people often get infected after touching the lizard or their enclosure and then touching their mouth or their food. Right now, there is a case here in our state, one of just about 15 across the country. So there aren't a lot, but it is in Oklahoma. Uh, and again, there's been a whole lot of discussion about salmonella and its relationship to reptiles, reptiles and birds known for being carriers of the disease. You know, we hear about it all the time, but if you've never studied it, you know, if it's been a while since biology class, sometimes it helps to put things into perspective to really understand what things are and how they work. So salmonella is simply, um, it's a gram negative rod bacteria and it's typically, as far as the transmission goes, uh, it's transmitted fecal orally, which means that it lives in the intestinal tracts of animals and humans, and it's spread that way. Um, feces landing on crops, uh, people not washing their hands after cleaning up after animals, things like that. There's a whole myriad of ways. As disgusting as it sounds, we may not all realize just how much exposure we have to feces in our day-to-day -day life. If you've got dogs, cats, if you're working in a fish tank, if you're sitting here making a video in a Nile monitor enclosure, you're exposed to a whole myriad of bacteria. To kind of put things into perspective some, the, uh, the United States, according to the C CDC, has about 1.3 million cases of salmonella annually. So there is a lot of exposure. When you look at the fact that, you know, we've got 330 million people in the country, 1 million of those every year is going to be exposed to and show symptoms of salmonella poisoning. Now, there's two different um, diseases, disease processes and infections that salmonella can cause. One of them, as I said, it lives in the intestine, lives in the small intestine. So you ingest it. If there's a large enough quantity to survive all your gastric juices and so forth, then it'll seat in your small intestines. And that causes a condition called gastroenteritis. Um, it's an infection, inflames your small intestines. You get things like nausea and vomiting and diarrhea and things like that. Um, every year, out of those 1.3 million people that get infected um, and test positive for it, about 2,600 of them will be hospitalized. And one of the things that will cause you to be hospitalized from a salmonella infection is, you know, oftentimes we can ingest it and, you know, it's got like a six hour to a two day incubation before it really blossoms. And after that time, our natural immune system uh, will typically kick in and knock it out. Um, of course, anytime we're talking about immune stuff, uh, immune system stuff, if you're immune compromised or if you're very young, very old, these are all factors that play into how, how, greatly the, how great the impact is gonna be on you uh, from the infections. Now, there is about 420 uh, fatalities every year from it. 
And a cause of that in many cases is the fact that if it, if it grows enough in your intestines and gets into your bloodstream, then it can localize in different organs, your heart, your lungs, your brain, things of that nature, and then you get bacterial infections in those organs. Uh, that's a much more serious um, set of circumstances, but they're still really treatable. So, you know, for all of the infections that we get across the country, it's got a really high survivability rate. Most of the time, it's like a week or two of not feeling very well, the body fights it off on its own, you're fine. So that, in a nutshell, is what 99% of, uh, of the bacteria does. Now, there is another strain. There's two strains that we're talking about. Um, the one that I had just mentioned, and then if you've ever heard of typhus, typhoid, that's, um, that is the other strain of salmonella. And that particular strain is only spread human to human. And you guys may have heard the term typhoid Mary. Um, it's, it refers to a lot of instances where somebody could be going around unaware that they've got an illness or an infection and just spreading it uh, unknowingly and getting everybody sick around them. So although that's not something that we tie to food and animals, um, it's only a human to human transmission. Uh, it's still a type of salmonella. But that's not something that you're going to get, um, you know, from not washing your hands around reptiles or eating bad chicken. You're not going to get typhus from it. It'd be the salmonella infections. Um, but anyway, what they're talking about is what we were just discussing, the gastroenteritis that you're going to get from those infections. Now, the reason why I went into detail on how many infections there were annually is because you'll see this in reference to salmonella all throughout our history. You'll hear about salmonella outbreaks in poultry, um, in cantaloupes, in cucumbers, in chickens, porks, anything. Essentially, you're, you're gonna up your exposure risk to salmonella by not cooking your food very well, by being exposed to a large amount of animals. Like I said, birds are the other um, you know, class of animals that have a pretty high instance of salmonella. So if you're running a chicken farm or something, you know, they really pump them animals full of antibiotics to keep that stuff from, from spreading through there. But in, in such a wide scope, um, in such a high number of infections, 1.3 million infections, pretty substantial. If we're talking about 15 people, um, that are tying their infections to a bearded dragon. We are not talking about a COVID level pandemic by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know, if you see anybody out there fear mongering about how dangerous our reptiles are and how you're gonna catch salmonella from them, um, you know, at least now you've kind of got a point of reference to where even if you don't try to correct them or engage them or anything like that, you at least know, okay, you know, you're fear mongering, you don't like reptiles, we get it, but this is not a big deal. Um, you know, our dogs, our cats, parrots and parakeets, all of this stuff can all carry salmonella. Um, so, so definitely try and keep those things in perspective. And like I said, I live in a house full of reptiles. I've got giant snakes over here. I've got a six foot monitor lizard who is refusing to come over here and say hello because it's feeding day and he doesn't see me with any food. So I'm getting the stink eye right now. As we said, birds and reptiles, they can both carry salmonella. But most of us know to begin with that, especially if we're keeping, you know, several different animals, you know, we handle one animal, we wash our hands. We don't, you know, we, we want to practice biosecurity with them. We don't want to risk if one of them has something transferring it to another one. So, you know, most of us are in that habit anyway. Um, you know, and it's, it's just a good habit to get into after you're done handling your animals, you know, don't start wiping your face and things like that. Go in, wash your hands, clean up, just be safe that way. So there's a couple different resources for folks that want to learn more about this. Of course, anytime anything comes up, I always recommend going to the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, going to their website, 
you can look through there, you can get a lot of details, you can find a lot of research and reports and so forth so you get accurate information. Um, we all know that the media loves to blow things out of proportion when they don't have anything better to talk about to get everybody scared. So always focus on trying to keep yourself, you know, just, just find out what the facts are. Don't let anybody tell you what to think. Draw your own conclusions based off of what you see. It's the best way to go all the time. Um, also, for most of you guys that watch me regularly, I know you're US ARC supporters because that's just the right thing to do. If you go onto US ARC's website at usarc.org, the first alert, it's an educational segment they have there on salmonella, how you can go about you know, keeping yourself healthy, keeping from getting it, um, just being safe, working with your animals and things like that. That's always gonna be linked down in the uh, description of all my videos, so you can scroll down there find usarc.org, click on it. Um, if you're not a USARC member, by all means, do that. Um, just things like this, you know, when it comes to pertinent information that, pertain, you know, that pertains to the reptile community, uh, they're really good about putting out alerts and notices, things like that, and just trying to keep people up to speed. Uh, for me, the big reason why I wanted to put this out is to just make sure that we're keeping things in perspective. Um, as you guys know, like we just said a second ago, we can, um, things can get blown out of proportion really quick. And we are dealing with reptile bans. We're dealing with some bad reptile legislation all the time. Somebody always wants to make our animals illegal. And if it starts hitting the press like it does, and it's all tied to bearded dragons, people are gonna start screaming, we gotta stop people from owning bearded dragons. Well, if we're gonna use those metrics to determine what we're doing, then the first thing we need to ban is chickens. So it's all really important stuff, guys. You know, always be safe to your animals. Always use common sense. Always keep yourself clean. Keep your animals clean. You know, that's one thing that I'm going to be doing today. Niles is going to eat. And while he's eating, I'm draining his tub. And we're going to get that cleaned out for him. Here is refusing to come out and be sociable because he's mad at me because I haven't brought his food out yet. We're going to bring the camera to him. Hey there, right, buddy? <laughs> he's so grumpy. He knows that when he sees me on days like today, I'm coming in here with food. But this is my baby boy. I've had him ever since he was a hatchling. Six feet of Nile monitor, and he is such a joy to work with. He's been a challenge over the years. But you going to kiss the camera, or are you going to try and bite it? <laughs> he doesn't care. He wants to eat. So anyway, guys, even though Niles is wanting to be antisocial, you guys all be social. Get down, click the subscribe button, like the videos, comment. If you got any questions or anything like that, by all means, get them down in the comments. And um, again, go check out, go check out yeah, easy for me to say, go check out usarc.org. Um, they've got some good information on there about salmonella and the CDC website. This is all stuff we need to do just to educate ourselves so that we can help educate everybody else that... Um, may be scared that our reptiles are going to end the world. So <laughs> you guys have an outstanding day and we'll see you next time on Intrepid Exotics.